This video is brought to you by electricalexamcoach.com, offering the number one electrical exam prep series. You can take our paid version with the Unlimiting Testing Center, but you can also take our free version that is completely free without the Unlimited Testing Center. Also, if these videos have been helping you at any time, you can also go there and pay it forward to see it head on to the next generation. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Let's go ahead and get to it. If you could fit pure bliss into a four by eight by 14 inch box it's probably pretty close you're gonna get all right y'all i got us a really cool one today so we are going to take this old panel and we are going to get rid of all these branch circuits, get rid of this, get rid of all this. And we're just going to put it in a nice Cantex box. All right, y'all, I was super excited to fix this one. This one had a lot of different things going on here. So the first thing I want to point out... Oh, I did find some safety glasses there. If you need them, just drop it down in the comments below. I'll ship them to you. But the biggest thing that I wanted to correct in this is for one, to remove all of the branch circuits. It had several branch circuits that were just going into that crawl space. If you look inside of there, it didn't look too bad, but on the outside, it's very, um, you know, degraded. But the biggest thing is that they had a ground rod driven to this panel. So, you know, and this is a second point of disconnect inside of a home. They had a ground rod driven to it. And also it was riding along that steel beam that is just above that panel. That's also attached to the steel overhead of the underground porch that I'm actually working in. So I wanted to completely remove that. We removed all of the branch circuits. And all we did is end up making a splice box for the feeder that was going down to the garage. So I was able to spray foam it, get everything nice and tight. We're not going to have any moisture coming in. And the you know this would be a great time also to talk about selecting the proper enclosures and using connectors. If you notice on those walls, it's very wet. I think they do also have some rain that may come in from the top from time to time. And also the ground that I was on was very wet. So just because you're not in an active rain situation, you may still need to do a NEMA 3R or higher rating enclosure in order to keep things nice and tight it, but you definitely want to make sure at a minimum you're using the proper connectors um, you know making the proper terminations and you know plugging up as many of those as you holes as you can because it will just sit there and draw inside of that moisture now you may not see a lot of rust inside of that panel but i guarantee if we crack some of those molded case breakers open they're probably rusted to pieces on the inside oh i wanted to show you guys that too where they had taken a metal connector and they had uh, used it with a little bit of tape there to hold it on i mean it worked before so hey y'all i wanted to show you something really cool that i just picked up from the supply house now my parts guy who has been doing this, I think about 30 years, said he had never seen one, but you guys can drop in the comments below if you have. This is actually a splice box, and it's got a pretty neat lid on it. You know, normally we're fumbling around with the screws and dropping one or whatever. These ones just have turn clasps in order to close it. It's made by Scepter. I'll let you know how I feel about it after I get it installed. So you mean to tell me that it's engineered in America, but it's not made here? All right, so what table do you use to calculate dryer loads? Is it 250.66, 220.55, 220.54, or 250.122? And the answer is C, table 220.54. If you're wanting to do dryer load calculations using the standard method, you're going to use table 220.54. Your spray foam has ruined everything I've ever owned. Dear spray foam, you've even ruined several of my phones. Dear spray foam, and the worst part of all, I always answer when you call. Dear spray fall. All right, so now we're going to install a water heater disconnect. Normally, I would just, with it being so close to the panel, I would just sleeve this and call it done and put a lockout kit on the panel. 
but where this wire is pulled so tight and there is zero slack coming out of it, we're going to sleeve it over to here and come in the side of a disconnect, then do a proper whip down and up into the water heater. Normally I would have opted for the fuseless throw knife disconnect or even just a fuseless pull out, but with the way that the market and the economy is, you just have to take what you can get. So this one is going to have a plug type Edison style fuse built inside, which is another level of protection for this water heater. All right, so we've got our discount, uh, discount, our disconnect mounted. We're getting ready to sleeve that, bring it inside of here, and then be able to whip out of the bottom of this back over to the water heater. I'm super excited about today's video. Today we're going to be swapping out this fuse box right here. So I'm going to try to get us a few action shots throughout the day while at the same time maintaining my power out schedule to make sure I get the power back on for the homeowners. This is a really cool fuse box. I want to take a minute and show you guys. So we've got a super tall, huge, massive fuse box. This thing is probably super stout on the inside. I'm getting ready to get us some shots here in just a second. Let's get this LED light off. I do love my Milwaukee light but it puts weird lines on the video, which you'll see disappear now. But yeah, this is a super awesome fuse box. I really thought this was cool. It says all fuses changed in 2017. But of course, most of the time when we come up to these, they've got all 30s in them. So we're going to come in today. We're going to lower this panel. It's pretty high. It's actually about eight feet tall. We're going to lower it to, you know, a good normal height. And then we are going to bring it in, bring the power in from the outside, and I'll get us a few shots on it. But let's take a look inside this thing. The customer's doing some remodeling here and did us a huge favor and actually left that sheetrock off right there. That way, in order we could access the wires, be able to pull the cables down if necessary. Just did us a huge solid on that. And I'm also on this job site running two RV receptacles. One of them will come out that eve, and the other one is going to come out the other eve. And this is really going to allow me access. So this is a pretty solid uh, fuse box. Of course, just with time and age, they just need to be replaced. And also, I don't ever tie any new circuits into a fuse box. Um, I've never tied a brand new circuit into a fuse box. Uh, we just always have the customer upgrade and update their home. And that way, everything is safe and we have breakers. Also, I'm going to be required to do anything with AFCI and GFCI protection respectively so we're going to get in here remember i've shot you another video of you know the first five steps that you do at any panel change first off you're going to make verify that the panel is off second you are going to check for any wires that are capped off before you got there and make sure they're capped off when you leave then you are going to mark all of your white 220s and make sure that they are black or another designated color then you're going to come through and make sure that there are no black neutrals if they are you're going to tape them respectively and figure that out when you get done then you can feel free to cut the panel loose at will and get ready to uh, pull the old panel off the wall let's get to it all right, y'all, that's going to bring us to the code of the week. And this week, we're going to be memorizing Annex C. Annex C is one of the most useful parts in the code book. And it's when you're dealing with pipe fill, when you have all of the same size conductors. So if they're all number 12s or all number 10s or all one aught, whatever it is, if you have all of the same size conductors and insulation rating, you can head over to Annex C and it'll tell you exactly how many of those conductors you can fit inside of that pipe. So just remember, Annex C, pipe fill. So I figured this would be a great time to talk about this code right here. And what this says is that no overcurrent device inside of this panel is allowed to be higher than six foot seven. You know, it's a large misnomer in our industry that it only accounts for the main. The main can't be higher than six foot seven. But the code actually states that no overcurrent device is allowed to be higher than six foot seven. I wanted to show you guys this rare breaker, single pole 50. Let's get to it. We had to dig it out of the woodwork. 
All right, so this panel change ended up being a bear. I don't know if you can tell very well in this video, but almost every one of those circuits came in the back of the panel, which made it difficult to remove the Romex, you know, connectors and to get it removed. We got it back installed. The inspector showed up a little bit later in the day and the power company showed up a lot later than they usually do, which put me pretty far behind. I had just enough time to grab a burger and head straight to church and then I didn't get home until really late in the evening. But with that being said, I want to take a minute to talk about Always plan a panel change taking all day. Whether your work takes all day or not, always count on it taking all day and let your homeowners know. Now, I've done about 500 panel changes and I've never had anyone lose any food in the refrigerator. That's one of the most common questions that we get. Hey, is our food going to be okay? Is our freezer going to be okay? But always let your customer to, you know, let them know that, hey, I'll do my part on the job, but I can't control the inspector or the power company, depending on how that looks in your area. One thing about being an electrician, you gotta use what's around you to get what you need done. It's time for the tool review of the week. This week we're reviewing Milwaukee's M18 Fuel Weed Eater. That's right, we're gonna take a look at their M18 Fuel Weed Eater with the quick lock technology that will allow you to snap in and out to their other accessories that go to this unit. This is the string trimmer. I'm super excited about this. It actually performed a lot better than I thought it was going to. So let's go ahead and pull this baby out of the box. So when you open up the box, it feels like every other Milwaukee tool that you open like it's Christmas morning and you're a little kid opening it up. So when you open this thing up, you're going to pull everything out. I was pretty impressed with the way it was packaged, but I was disappointed with how much assembly that you had to do. I understand they have to make the boxes smaller for shipping and the assembly was not as easy as I would hoped it would be for all of the excellent Milwaukee engineering that we are used to. But with a little bit of time and a little bit of effort, we were able to get it out and be able to get this. I do love that it came with one of the rapid chargers and it also came with a battery that we're going to talk about here in a minute. Very easy to snap together. You just line the two arrows up and you snap them together. And when you go to put your handle on, you can deal with the struggle for a few minutes. As far as the handle goes, it is a super stout handle and I feel like the guard is really going to you know, do some help. I don't feel anything about this feels cheap. It feels strong. You can go into turtle mode and into uh, hair mode if you want to go a little bit faster. So let's lock our battery in and see what happens. So upon my first use, I was super impressed. I have a really nice steel weed eater, but man, this thing ate up the grass like nobody's business. I was not struggling to use the piece of equipment. It is a little bit heavier. I did buy it so my boy could start helping me weed eat, but it might be another summer or two before he's able to really manhandle it because it is pretty heavy with that eight amp hour battery that it came with but as far as use goes it feels really good for usage i don't feel like i'm struggling i do not feel like the uh, motor is struggling to keep up with whatever i wanted to go to we're going to go to some thicker grass here in just a second where we hadn't started really mowing for the year yet uh, it's a little bit thicker on the high side where i get a lot of water there and it really blew through that grass i felt really impressed with how it used so i would highly recommend it milwaukee two thumbs up i felt like this was very strong and very stout and it didn't struggle to do anything that I wanted it to do and of course like any other tool time will tell let's get to it all right y'all that's it for this week but I just wanted to take a minute to encourage you and remind you that the only way that you lose is if you quit I know times can seem really hard right now and you know you may be going through some struggles at work and you know all the things that are going on in the world but the only way that you lose is if you quit so keep pushing your family needs you we need you you know you have a unique set of skills that nobody else has and a unique set of connections that no one else has and what I want us to do is to be able to use those skills and those connections to serve as many people as we can but I want you to know that when it gets hard and times get tough that you can do it I'm rooting for you I want you to know that I'm praying for you every day and I just want to see you guys win if you ever need anything from me you can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com hey.